Okay, so it looks like we're recording. Hi, Heather. Hello. Good How morning. Are Good. Are you guys getting any snow out there like they're getting in the East Coast? No, we are not. We did have a heavy frost this morning and some freezing fog, but no snow yet. Oh, it's so, crazy. That's well, okay. I, I want to thank you so much for uh, joining me and, and working on this project today. Um, I'll take a second to introduce myself. My name is Mary Hall Scott. For those of you that don't know me, I own Permanent Makeup by Designs. I am an independent artist. I own Permanent Makeup Tattoo Supply Company. Uh, we supply individual artists along with schools and academies. We work with people all across the U.S. and actually have distributors internationally. And then I also founded PMD Academy, which has turned into PMU Collaborative with my co-founder, Laura McElroy. So um, it's really, really exciting. And the, the, the reason that we went from PMD Academy to PMU Collaborative is we're, we're trying to make a difference in the industry, right? And we've extended our training programs from like five days to three months. So we want to help elevate our industry. We want to make our industry more professional and we need the education. And by doing so, everyone is going to benefit, not just a few, but like the masses are going to benefit if we can elevate the standards to where I want to see them, you want to see them. And I'm sure many other artists and educators want to see them. So um, that's a little bit about me. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Heather Rancier Mayo, and I am a permanent makeup artist as well as makeup artist and cosmetologist in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I've been in the industry for a little over 25 years uh -huh. um, in different roles. I'm working as an artist, an educator in management, things like that, um, all kind of all over the place. So um, I, I love learning. It's a nonstop process for me. Um, I think if I ever get to the point where I want to quit learning, I might as well just pick, dig my own grave kind of thing. <laughs> um, so it'll just be, I'll be over then. Um, but yeah, so it's really important to me to have a continuous education for myself, but also to in that really, um, incorporate my peers and really seek out, um, you know, credible, knowledgeable sources so that you can make sure that you're not only getting accurate, um, you know, scientific and experience-based mm -hmm. information, but also, you know, just uh, sharing that with your overall community. Because I, my favorite, one of my favorite quotes, uh, I think I might've told you before is rising tides carry all ships. And I just fully believe that, that if we yeah. Um, just, you know, continually elevate um, the level of uh, learning and the level of service that we offer to our clients and that level of knowledge, then we will just literally elevate our whole industry. And when we do that, it benefits all of us. So that's my whole my whole goal. <laughs> it's so true. Sorry. And you mentioned continuing education. I came into this field uh, like you, you know, doing many different things, but coming from the medical field. And when I, when I looked at the training and that there wasn't any requirements and, and I looked at the lack of continuing education, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I knew right then and there from the minute I came into this industry that I would want to help make some changes. When yes. I was a radiation therapist, it used the program used to be you did your radiology and then you did an extra year to be a radiation therapist. Well, it was so difficult and our physics degree was so intense and the industry decided that they wanted to elevate themselves to a four-year degree. And I told you my cat would be in the video. <laughs> Sorry about that. And, uh, they, they, the whole industry wanted to elevate itself. And so it went to that four-year degree instead of the three-year degree. And when I think in my mind about PMU, uh, that's how I think. Like, I want to take this industry from two day trainings to three month programs, like what we are offering, or right. to apprenticeship programs, you know, a six to year month long apprenticeship program. Um, so that's what I have in my mind. And yeah. so we, but we've had the opportunity to meet. We're going to meet again at the end of November. I'm so excited Yay. for some more yeah. training at our retreat. Uh, yeah. So let's get started because we don't want to make these too long. So the topic today 
um, is going to be around needles and trauma, right? I think you hear this question as often as I do. It's like, um, what needle causes more trauma? Does a one needle cause more trauma? Does a mag cause more trauma? Does a shader cause more trauma? Or maybe a liner because the tip is more pointed. Like you hear that question all the time in our industry, I think, don't you? Yeah, I do. You see it just even like, um, even, even just take going just to social media, like on all the different platforms, there's, it's a very common question. Like, what do I do? And that just further, um, reiterates like what you were just saying, there's n two days just isn't enough. And people have to understand things like their needles and why and what and where and when, so that, they can make those decisions when they're by themselves in their shop and they're like, they have the client space right in front of them. <laughs> you can't just stop and call a mentor if you have one even. Right. So uh, yeah, so it is a very popular question. Yeah, it, it's kind of like that question, how many passes, you know, but that's a right. whole nother, that's a whole nother learning session, right? For sure. <laughs> so, well, we kind of want to talk about today, and this kind of relates to you're doing something within the PMU collaborative that we can't like let out of the bag, like I said. But this this is <laughs> this is like your cup of tea. Training is your cup of tea. So I want to kind of describe each needle. So if we start with a liner, um, people need to understand that liners are closer together. Not They're the more tapered. Yep. They have a longer taper. So they have a sharper point and they're closer together. So that provides density, especially yeah. when you're doing circles, uh, uh, techniques like that. Okay. So that's, that's your, cause people always get confused on tapers too. So if you just remember the longer taper is your liner, sharper point and closer together. And then your shaders are a bit more rounded. So it's yeah. a bit more of a round tip, right? Um, and they're further apart. So there's space in between there. I right. think um, we've talked, I know you and I have talked a lot about body artists, right? And they labeled the, their needles kind of like, so simply, it's like what you do with them. Like right. a, a liner you line with and a shader you shade with. Right. So can you give us so an uncomplicated? I know, right? Like, what would be the example? What kind of brow would you do if I put like a three or a five shader in your hand? Um, I would for with a three or a five shader myself personally, I would either come in and do maybe a more uh, densely colored powder brow or ombre brow. Or I would maybe use it for some light uh, like shade and blade type of you know, hair strokes with a, a combo brow. That's what I would use them for. Yeah, that's exactly what I would use it for. I do a nice powder brow with it, a light ombre shade and blade. Cause I would do things that I would want to be powdery or fluffy or airy. You know, our industry changes the terms all the time. I know <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you never know what feathery, you know, yes. um, but it's a shader and, and those needles are further apart. So you're not going to get the density. If I wanted a, a really dense ombre, like I wanted it really dark on the bottom of the brow, I would grab a liner yeah. or, um, I think I'm like you, I would grab a liner in my lash line often, um, yeah. my eyebrow to do an eyelash enhancement to get that yes. density. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I usually, in fact, um, I, I don't know why I had never used it before, but yesterday I was doing a lash enhancement and I grabbed a five round liner mm -hmm. instead of, I normally do a one or a three and I just grabbed a five and I was like, I just want to see. And actually I kind of fell in love with it. <laughs> Yeah, like, maybe that where? comes from that tiny tattoo class, right? Where Cassandra's like, bigger needles, bigger yes. needles. Yes, <laughs> probably, probably. But yeah, I was like, why didn't I do this before? But then that just yeah. goes back to like constantly learning and trying and playing and practicing, so. And we get programmed. We get programmed because we take one class and they use one needle and we're told yeah. this is what to do. But that makes sense. So if I had to guess, I would guess that your lash line was pretty wide that she, you know, had a decent lash line, nice lashes. And so a five, you've got more needles. Uh, you're just going to fill in more space quicker. Right. 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 Now, if, if I had like one of my alopecia clients, 
you know, I may not do that. I may drop back down to a three because I just want to do a line, a very simple line uh, right across to let that heal because alopecia skin is very different. So again, it goes back to the trauma and not what needle is causing it, because if you use the needle correctly for what it's designed for, there will be minimal trauma with the right technique. So um, like Meg's, for example, you know, those are double stacked, right? They're not round like liners or shaders. And people are always like, oh my God, they cause so many trauma because there's more needles or more pins. You know, I personally use Meg's on the lips all the time. I personally use Meg's on the brows all the time. Um, we know that a mag will ride higher on the skin, so to speak, right? Like our one needle is going to penetrate through, go very deep, very quickly, like a spear or a dart at a dartboard, (laughs) you know, and that mag is going to ride across the skin, but you can use it for color packing. You can use it for other things. So, you know, if somebody said, well, what's going to cause more trauma, a one or a mag, there's really no answer, right? They're both going to cause trauma. They're both going to cause trauma because they have to cause some trauma in order to do their job. One, right, and then two, it's kind of just really well thinking through the process, like what, and then marrying a few things together. It for me, like I'm like, okay, what, what's the end result that I need to achieve? What is their skin like? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what's the shape like? What's this? So, like for example, yesterday with that lash enhancement, literally, what kind of prompted me to, I think, grab that five was that when I was looking at her lash line, she did have absolutely gorgeous lashes. And she had those very like, uh, staggered sort of lashes instead of just like a straight row. And so I was like a lot of space to kind of fill in there and it, Mm -hmm. it turned out really beautiful and she was thrilled. And so was I. So, but again, it was kind of thinking about like, I need to do this and how can I do it? And then I thought through like, what technique am I going to use? And then just being, you know, there's a lot of things that we have to be very cognizant of. And when you're first starting out, especially, or if you just haven't had any guidance, Mm -hmm. trying to like, think about all those things at one time is really like overwhelming. So I think breaking it down, um, you know, and just even just like things like this, just those little bits of education, a few minutes here, a few minutes there, they're so much easier to, to swallow for us and we can retain yeah. it better. <laughs> oh, it's so true. And um, one thing newer to the market, which I will take credit for, because I actually designed and was the first person to bring acupuncture cartridges to the oh, market. My that. one RL acupuncture was the first. <laughs> Yay. I love um, it. Because so I studied funny. acupuncture and, and we started doing all these, you know, whipping and, and pendulum techniques. And so, so take, you know, take your eyeliner and you've got a lot of space in there and you chose what sounds like to be the very appropriate needle with and you probably did the procedure with very little trauma. Um, but let's say that that eye, uh, the skin was thinner, the, the client was older, it was a very vascular eyelid. Uh, she had just a very minimal amount of lashes in a very small space. You know, in that case, if you would have taken a five round liner or something like that, you may have caused a little bit more trauma because it, it it was the needle that wouldn't have been appropriate, right? right? So like in a case like that, you want to reach to an acupuncture needle where you can go in and out of the skin or you can go across the skin and that needle, because it's more rounded, even than a shader right. will roll over those vessels instead of stabbing them. Yes. Um, so even on someone with very uh, heavily vesseled skin or very thin skin, we mm. can minimize the trauma again, if we choose the right needle. Yeah. So the, the wrong needle would only be because you paired like, it's like pairing wine, right? You paired like yeah. the wrong needle with the wrong technique on the wrong person. In right. that case, you're a seven or a five liner would do more harm than like a three acupuncture. Right. Yeah, it, it absolutely does. And I think, you know, I know I'm sure you've run into situations like this too, that sometimes like you can think through everything and then you'll just have a person whose skin will surprise you and you're like, Oh, what's happening here. And you either have to stop and readjust, you know, kind of rethink things and reroute Mm -hmm. or when they come in for their touch up, you're like, Oh, okay. We need to like 
come at this from another, another position mm-hmm. and look at it that way. So, I mean, sometimes even when you think you've thought everything through, there's always an extra variable that can get thrown in the mix. So having an understanding of all the needles and what tools you have really empowers you to then make those calls for your, for yourself in the best possible outcome for the client too. So, yeah, that's a really good point. Cause I'm 10 years in and mm-hmm. You know, I'm very transparent and I would tell everyone that'll happen to me. I'll Uh misjudge after 10 years, I'll misjudge, but that's the difference between an educated artist, um, and experienced and non-educated and non-experienced, because like you said, I either might make a change during the procedure or when they come back and their skin is healed, I'll make the change at that time. But more than likely, I know what change needs to be made. Right. And if you're right. not educated, it's like grasping at straws or finding a needle in a haystack. Right. And by the time yeah. you switch up three or four times, the skin is inflamed, you know, that's traumatized. You've got lymph production, right. you've got all sorts of stuff going on. Right. But, but and yeah. I think, um, I think just as a side note to that, um, part of that whole thought process is after your procedures taking, um, taking good notes, making good chart mm-hmm. notes, because like, I know, I, I mean, I don't know about everybody else, but I know for myself that before I, I have somebody come back in, even for like a color boost, I've already pulled their, their old file. Mm-hmm. And I've looked at like, Oh, what did, what did we do last time? And what outcome did we have? Oh, did I have any obstacles? And I already know what color I used and blah, blah, blah. So that when they come in, as soon as I look at them, I can be like, Oh, well that even though we did this, that faded kind of cool over time or, you know what I mean? So I think taking good notes and documentation about like what needles you used, what machine you used, what speed you worked at, all that stuff um, is really immeasurably valuable. Oh, that's, that's so key, especially, I mean, throughout your whole entire career, but especially in the beginning. So I think if people understand the needles, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about a one, um, we're going to do some lining with it, right? We might line outline the lips, um, but we're going to do some lining with it. Uh, If it's an acupuncture needle and we're coming on and off the skin, we might do some pixelating with it. We might do some whip shading or some pendulum with it, right? Um, There are people that fill in an entire brow, fill in an entire lip you know, you can do circles, you can do cross hatch, you can do back and forth with a one. Um, But I always tell people to remember those, we, we sell classes, and we see this all the time. But I think that what doesn't get stressed enough is those are, again, experienced um, techniques, because that one can go very deep, very fast. If you're doing pointillism, you can leave freckles. I mean, you have to be really good with a one if you're going to whip shade and pendulum throughout a whole brow. Right. Right. I agree. I do. I agree because with the one, especially if with that longer taper to it, yeah, you can very easily just have like, I think of them as like hot spots and, Mm -hmm. you know, just being totally transparent. I learned that (laughs) <laughs> the hard way, like a couple of times being like, Oh, <laughs> what happened there? Oh, that was me. I happened there. Like, right. So then you have to go back and, you know, and then, you know, learn from your mistakes. But, um, but yeah, I think you can definitely come up with stuff like that. And then again, with the trauma, um, too, like if you don't have the right stretch and things like that, then you can create, you know, yeah, the right angle. Damage. Yeah. The right angle and stuff like that. You can create more damage that way too, for sure. So when you're talking about like threes and fives and sevens, we already kind of talked about this. I mean, nines, um, I don't use, I kind of only go up to a seven. That's my personal preference just because I can use it for everything. But there's nines, there's thirteens, there's there's huge, you know, needles out there. And the benefit that we mentioned is surface area, right? Like we can yeah. cover more area. So we can take a three and we can do circles or we can do, you know, back and forth cross hatch again. We can do some of these, um, but coming in and out of the skin with a liner as we talked will create more trauma because as you come in and out, I always tell people my analogy is, it's like an airplane landing on an airstrip with uh, 
metal spikes in its tires. You know, it'd be like, boom, 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 boom. it'd be like even rougher than some of the flights we've had. Right. Right? Like <laughs> those metal spikes would tear up the runway when you land and when you take off. And when you've got a really sharp needle, if you come down onto the skin, you're going to cause some trauma. And when you come up off the skin, you're going to cause some trauma. Right. Now, with that being said, I always say there's really experienced artists out there that do it right. And mm-hmm. there's experienced artists that offer classes doing that, but that's an experienced artist that has worked very hard to develop that technique. You know, right. that's not what They're the very, very, person should do. For yes. Them. Yes. They very finely finessed their, their movements and techniques and their stretch and everything to all come together in a perfect storm, so to speak. Right. Exactly. So I think you need to, like you said, you need to look at what you're trying to accomplish you need to understand the skin or the layout, you know, can I use a liner? Is that going to be appropriate? You know, should I use a shader? Do I want something softer? You know, is it vascular? Should I use an acupuncture? Um, Am I just going to do, you know, a light blushing? Can I just use that brushing stroke that we learned? Remember with the mag, you know, where you barely come up and off the skin. You can give a little bit of a softer edge, but it's, right. it's not like that whip shading or that pendulum. And that's actually, that was a, um, a term that we kind of picked up from the body artists when we were going through that training. Right. Um, but I think the important thing to remember is if the needles used correctly, if you said the parrot, the perfect marriage or the perfect storm, if you pair together the right needle, you know, the right machine, the right techniques, you know, the right pigments, all of that, Mm -hmm. um, then you end up with your best possible results. But I would say that you can't really label and say one needle causes more trauma than another, because you you just can't say that because there's really not any truth to that because there's so many circumstances surrounding that. Yes. There's just, there's so many variables and those variables change with every single client. You have some consistencies that are, you know, facts and things like that, but there's just so many variables with every single client. So, um, yeah, I think it just comes down to that. And like mags, I've been, I like playing with mags. Um, I just think they're a lot of fun. And I like, I like using the curved mags, for example, because, Um, they are a little bit gentler, like when you're, you know, turning Mm -hmm. or, um, if you, it, you know, you're not worried about catching the, like a a flat blunt corner on something where the needles are just like, like that, you know, like that you can catch, but with the rounded ones, it's a lot easier. So I think those are, you know, when you're in a situation that where you're going to be on a make, you know, creating really soft rounded, edges or things like that. I think those are great for that. Um, that's a great point. I think we use the curved mag, uh, absolutely way, way more in PMU than we do a straight mag with that. Standard mag, yeah. out. Um, I think I kind of like to wrap this up with you telling me about how you practice. Cause I've recently seen a video that you've done <laughs> <laughs> and oh, it was gosh. showing your practice skin and it was the most incredible video that I've seen, uh, showing practice skin. So <laughs> can you talk to us a little bit about how you practice? Cause if you don't understand the needles, you've got to go back to the skin, right? You got to go back right. to the practice table. Yes. And even still, like when I do that, I, I'm relearning or it's like a review. And that's why I think it's so important to continue doing it all the time because so on the practice skin, sometimes I get a little carried away and I (laughs) like, I'll, I'll be like, I'm going to work on line work today before you know it. I've got like five or six different things going on on one skin. And I'm like, Oh, um, that's not organized at all. (laughs) My brain just went, (laughs) but, um, but I will usually like, I, I will take like uh, one needle And we went over this in, you know, in the collaborative in the, in the course. And I thought it was so helpful because it made me like really be mindful in my practice work and methodical in my practice work. So I'll take, like, say, I'll start off with like a one and I will try a few different uh, techniques. I'll, I'll try like, um, 
you know, doing just a straight line. I'll try shoveling. I'll try pushing. I'll try whipping and at different, and I'll do each one of those. I usually like to keep it to like three different, I'll try three different speeds. Like oh, I, okay. I just, clusters, of, clusters of three things don't overwhelm me. So, <laughs> and I don't get too out too far out of the box. So I'll just do like, I'll pick like one needle and I'll do three different speeds or three different techniques. So by and speeds, you mean like voltages, you might yes, do one yes, at six, one at seven and one at eight. Yes, correct. And see what differences I get. And then I'm also thinking about how did that feel in my hand um, with that machine? And then I might try that same thing with a different machine and be like, well, how did it feel that way? Was it more comfortable for me that way? Did it feel more fluid um, mm -hmm. and emotions and things like that? Um, and then I'll just break it down and try different needles. Sometimes I'll use different pigments. So, cause that, that changes how you look at it too. Um, so, so yeah, I just, <laughs> sorry, I, oh, my husband's so coming out to, to cook lunch and I'm like, Shh, we're doing a zoom. So I'm sorry to mean to interrupt you. Keep going. No, no, not at all. Um, so yeah, I just, I like to do things in like groups of three. So I'll might try like three different machines with like one needle and three different techniques and three different voltages. And I just do it in little clusters. And then what I thought was so useful that you taught us in the collaborative was, um, you know, writing down. And I actually, I could just write it with a pen, but I make myself like okay. do it with the machine. So that's just a little bit more practice, a little bit more detail work, but I'll notate like what voltage that was, I, what, that I used, what machine it was, um, and go just go from there and just note it because that way then I can refer back to it and be like oh I liked the way that section lo looked as opposed to that that's more of what I'm looking for today so what did I do and it's nice to be able to refer to yeah and you can look at your lines and say oh when I was at six you know there was space in between those dots in yes. that line so so that's really not working for me so now by the time I got up to eight I had a nice solid line and mm -hmm. that's a beautiful line. So when I do that line with my one RL, I should be at an eight voltage because yes. I know that that's the result I'm going to get with my natural hand speed. And the same right. thing with whipping and pendulum. You know, I know for me personally, if I'm doing that, I need to be around 5.5 or six on my voltage. So that needle and that machine and that voltage, they all just like we have said multiple times now, you know, they marry together to form that yes. technique and, and right. become successful. Yeah. And I, what I'm in the process of doing right now is I'm getting a, just a three ring binder with some, um, sheet protectors. Oh, perfect. In there. And then I can slide skins in that I want to go back and reference, mm -hmm. um, as, like a, as a quick reference more or less so that I can say like, Oh yeah, I, 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 let me look at this sheet that I did the other day or wait, I remember a few months ago I was playing with this. Let me look at that. And that way I can just really quickly pull it out and look at it. That makes so much sense. And I think um, maybe on the last note here, uh, one thing that people don't understand is they they see something new come out and they have to buy the, the latest bling, right? Like the latest right. flash, because I've designed my own cartridges. So I've gone to another country, I've toured the factories, I've picked out the metal, I've, I've chosen the soldering, where it's going to be, how much flexibility I want it to have. Like I design cartridges specifically for our industry because what we do is very different from body art. So micro PMU mm -hmm. tattoo cartridges are designed for our industry and that makes a difference. So what I see artists doing is like they get used to one needle and then something comes out and then they try that needle. And what they have to understand is they have to go back to the practice material. If you've never used my acupuncture needle, start on practice material because I just did a thing in CTP, right? We don't practice on faces. Yeah, That's not I what we're that. about. We're more professional than that. Um, and if you switch from one brand to another, that long taper is going to be a different taper. The yes. short taper is going to be a different taper. It might be a medium taper. So the at the tapers and the tips on the needles from each manufacturer are going to be different because yes. what I use on my shore and my acupuncture are different probably than somebody else's because they were my designs for what I felt our industry needed. So if you for some reason, all of a sudden switch to another brand, then you need to go to the practice table before you start going practicing on people. 
I agree with that a hundred percent. Cause I, I ran into that myself, like switching back and forth between brands. I'm like, Oh, that's doesn't feel the same, or that doesn't even quite look quite the same, or it didn't perform the same, um, the way I used it. So yeah, yeah. I think that's really important. Again, it's just, there's a lot of variables to consider. So it's important to understand all your tools mm -hmm. so that you can choose correctly to give you the best possible outcome. So, well, Heather, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this with me. I think getting the message out there that no one needle versus another needle is responsible for trauma. The trauma comes from using inappropriate needles on inappropriate techniques on the wrong skin. You know, yes. just, just like we've discussed, there's so many variables to that. And so it's, it's, it's not the needle, but what we need to do is we need to educate ourselves on needles. We need to understand the configurations. We need to know how they were designed, what they were designed for. And to get the best possible outcome, we really should use a needle in a way that it was designed to do what it's meant to do. If that makes right. sense. Yes, no, I, I agree. And I think it's important to just, uh, you know, and and as we wrap it up, just remind people that it's really important to ask questions. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know, just ask, like stop and ask, um, reach out to somebody. And yeah, it might not always be like, you know, we can't always do a quick spur of the moment um, answer for people, but just reaching out and asking questions or taking the time to research things that will help you a lot, mm -hmm. making sure that you're getting that, that, uh, that information that you need. And look for those right people. I know I've always been labeled or known as the science gal because I come from medicine. I have 30 years and yeah. I have multiple medical degrees. I have physics degrees. I've always said, if it doesn't make sense, science sense, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. So right. make sure you're following people or you're mentoring uh, with people that are using science behind what they're saying, because our social media right. is so dangerous. It's just it really is. Yes. Oh, uh, I, 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 I cringe sometimes because I see such bad advice given that has no science, uh, merit whatsoever, but that right. person has seen it somewhere else and they're repeating it. Um, yeah. so again, education is so important and I know you're working on a huge project and you're part of the collaborative and, you know, our focus is going to be to elevate our entire industry and change yeah. the way our educational system works today. Yay. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I right. appreciate it. Bye. If anybody wants any information on the collaborative, um, you can go to www.pmucollaborative.com and learn about our program and how we are changing education. Yep. Thank Absolutely. you. All right. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay,